Hello again, in this episode I'll be posing the dinosaur, ready for rendering. So I've done a bit more to my dinosaur, I've done the eyes and the teeth. I'll quickly show you the eye setup. So if I go to shading and click on the eyes, you can see that I've got a realistic eye texture. So if I go to UV editing mode, I can show you the details. So there's a realistic human eye texture. And if I go to edit mode now, you can see that I've just unwrapped it. If I isolate it, that will help. Cut off the back half because I don't need them and then just unwrapped it around the eye texture. Also for the principal shader, I've given it a fairly low roughness, but I've also put the clear coat up with a high roughness as well. And that gives us this sort of nice shine to it and a fun looking eye. He's also excited so his pupils are slightly dilated. For the teeth, they're fairly straightforward. I painted them in a similar way to the dinosaur. I've plugged the painted texture, if I show that, I've plugged that painted texture into a color ramp, into the roughness and the bump. I have got color ramps there, but they're not doing anything because I was quite happy with the way it looked. But they're just there in case I wanted to edit how it looked. And that gives this overall result, a tiny bit of bump and a bit of sort of yellowness and texture. Okay, so I'm ready to pose. So let's go to the animation tab up the top here. And I'll go into front view and I'm going to give him a very basic rig. There's not a lot of movement I can do because the feet are joined together, but I can probably just rotate his body. It's mainly the upper body that's important. So let's shift A, add an armature, single bone. Now I need to go down to the armature menu and go to display and in front, and that will always be in front now. Bring this one down to the bottom here. Now in the armature tab in the workspaces, when I'm in edit mode, there is an x-axis mirror and it sometimes works. <laughs> so I'm extruding and it's not working. <laughs> so I'll just duplicate them and put them on the other side when I'm done. I'm not doing any sort of clever rigging or anything. I'm just doing a basic rig so that I can pose it. So when you're rigging your character, make sure you move around into the different views. So the position of the bones is quite clear and obvious and make sure the bones are in the middle of your meshes. E to extrude the bones and then you can just move them around as normal. There's some things you just get used to like how many bones do you put in the spine and so forth, how many bones did I put in the tail and those are things that just take a bit of practice and you get them after a while. To align them down the middle I'm just pressing scale x0 and that will push them all into the center. And now I'll mirror all these across, so Shift D to duplicate, Scale X minus one. I'll undo that and I'll do it around the 3D cursor. So I'll just come up to the top here, 3D cursor, and Scale X minus one. And now they're all in place. Of course, do make sure your 3D cursor is in the center. So it's a good idea to save your work before you apply any armatures. I'll go back into object mode, select the objects I want to join. So I'm selecting the eyes, in fact, I should apply the mirror first before doing that. Otherwise it will distort when I apply the armature. So I'll apply that. On the eyeballs, I've got a mirror. And someone recommended that I use a mirror object rather than the object center. I was getting some weird anomalies where they weren't in the center. So I mirrored around the dino remesh object, which is this one here. Anyway, I'll apply that mirror. Other modifiers like subdivision surface shouldn't matter. So I'll grab all these objects. I've joined the teeth together, so it's teeth, dinosaur, and eyeballs. I'll move the controller separately from the rig. And the rig is last, and that becomes the active object then. So when I press Control-P, they will parent to the rig and with automatic weights. That's relatively quick because it wasn't a complex mesh. Now let's go to pose mode with our armature selected and check that it's working. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna to have to do some weight painting here. So I'm rotating the arm and the tooth is going with it. How annoying, thought I'd get away with that. So weight painting in 2.8 is slightly different. If you go up to edit, you have to go to untick lock object modes. Now I can shift select my dinosaur and go to weight paint mode. And because my rig or armature was in pose mode, I can now control left click and select the bones. Although I've selected the dinosaur and not the teeth. Let's just check the dinosaur's working all right though. And I can see by checking all these weights that we don't seem to have too much problem. Okay, so back to object mode. 
click on my armature. That's still in pose mode. Click, select the select the teeth this time, and let's go to weight paint mode there. So this one should have full weight. So with my paintbrush selected, let's go to the tool panel here, put the weight to one, and paint. So this one doesn't want to be influenced by this bone. So I should be able to just click on this one with control click. Remove any weight for this object here. Actually, I should do an X mirror as well, shouldn't I? There we go. That would make my life a bit easier. So I don't have to go between the two. The X, X mirror and the options just there. And this one wants to be full, so I'll turn the weight back up to one. In fact, I forgot to take the weight off as well. So that's working on that side. That's good. I've done weight painting for ages, actually. That's why I'm messing around, not doing it properly. Just go into isolation mode with forward slash on my numpad so I can just see the bones and the teeth. There we go, that's better. This one wants zero. And in fact, there's still a bit on there. Actually, no, that one wants to be full as well. What am I talking about? This one wants to be full. Good idea, I'll get there in the end. So this one wants to be full here. So it's controlled by this bone. And this should have no weight at all. I'm just going to click on this bone. I'm just going to click on this bone again. Now that I'm in isolation mode, I can see what I'm doing a bit more. There we go, that should be good. And this one wants to have zero, and the last one wants to have zero. So turn the weight down to zero, paint that on, paint that on there. And I think we're finally getting there. Now let's see. Yes, yeah, so that bone affects it really slightly. So I'll just get rid of any weight paint there. And I hope we haven't got a glitch because it doesn't seem to be affecting it. As I can, oh, that one is. <laughs> Get rid of that. This is the thumb. That's what's affecting it. I was just getting worried there that there wasn't any and we were going to have a glitch. So the thumb bone was, I suppose it is fairly close. Yeah, that's what it was. Try and get rid of every little bit. Right, I think we're there now. I think that's probably the only thing that's the problem. Okay, back into object mode back out of isolation mode and now I can start thinking about posing finally let's click on our armature and go to pose mode which we're in okay so now I want to pose my model I'm going to put him into different positions and see which one I like for that I'm going to use the dope sheet so if I select all the bones for the dinosaur by tapping a and let's go to frame 0 to start with using the right mouse button and if I press I over the viewport and location and rotation, so lock rot, it's inserted a keyframe. So if I ever want to go back to this pose, I can just go to frame one and duplicate these keyframes. So now if I duplicate these keyframes and let's say put them out of the way on frame 10, I can then go to these keyframes, pose my model, and I can choose between different poses. So I'll have uh, one on frame 20, one on frame 30. I suppose I'll duplicate them now, but it's, they're all going to be the same keyframes at the moment. But now, on frame 10, let's say, let's uh, move them around. And I'm just grabbing a bone, rotating it. YY will rotate along this axis. So double Y is the local Y axis, which is going this way. And I'll have to move my controller as well. I've got two separate bits to my controller at the moment. So if I insert a keyframe and just move that into position, and if it can press I, lock rot. Okay, so each time I've set the keyframe, I forgot to give this one a start, so you'll see that the controller doesn't move, whereas my dinosaur doesn't move either. What's going on? <laughs> Don't tell me I forgot to... I forgot to insert the keyframes, didn't I? Yes, I did. <laughs> Dear. Uh, so over this keyframe, I'll move them into position again. Hopefully this is not too confusing but I like to sometimes leave my mistakes in in case people make them at the same time as me. Then they know what to correct. And they know what not to do. 
So now I've set this, select all your bones and press I, lock rot, and now there's a keyframe on this one. So if I right click and go back to the beginning, you can see he's at the beginning there. And this is the basics of animation basically. So there's the second frame where it's a slight tilt. So it looks more of an action pose. We'll move him about a bit more in a second. And the same for my controller. And that's got a keyframe there. I just need to set the base keyframe. So I'll select both the controller and its little movement pad there. Move myself back to the beginning and press Alt R and Alt G, which will remove any rotation or movement. Just bring it out in the Y and that can be its starting position. If I press I now, lock rot, now we've got two keyframes there. So it's almost moving with my dinosaur character. Very overly complicated explanation there, sorry about that. Hopefully it makes sense. So what I want to do is pose my dinosaur now. Let's go to the armature again. And let's start moving him about a bit more. So he's gonna lean one way, I think. Sort of look down at the game. Twist across a bit, so he's out this way. I want the tail coming round. Obviously the rotation is affected by the view you're looking in. So it's just the easiest way to rotate is to go to a specific side. Let's say you want to rotate around the Y axis now. I can then just rotate this around the Y axis. Or if I want to rotate around the X, I can move to this side and rotate him around the X. So now he looks a bit more like he's playing because he's in some sort of pose. So don't forget, select all your bones, I lock rot. And don't whatever you do, press undo in this mode. It will remove all of your movement. That's it's a key feature in 2.8 at the moment. <laughs> so I think it's just a bug in 2.8. If I press undo, it will remove it all. But you should be fine if you've set your keyframe. So if I go to the next one, I can choose a different pose and try something else out. First, let's uh, position our controller so it's in the correct position. He's playing a driving game and he's leaning to one side, I reckon. Set your location and rotation first. So I lock rot, and now this has got a keyframe on it. Ooh. So actually they're sort of moving together weirdly. That's not the point of this, it's just so I've got different poses. That's the only idea. But it is a basics of animation, as you can see. So setting my location and rotation before making any undo changes and things like that. It's best just not to undo, it's just better to remove your objects so you don't hit the undo glitch. You can set it to record actually, that might be a better idea. Just set it to record and every time you move something it will record it on that keyframe, but you must be on the keyframes otherwise you get all keyframes everywhere. Probably a better idea, put it on record. So if you want to see what it looks like then you'll have to click on the armature and clear it being in front to give you a better idea. And I'm quite liking that pose already. So I'm going to do a couple of poses and choose my favorite. So if I go on to the next pose, he's ready for posing again. But because I applied my location and rotation, I can go back to that one and choose that one, make a different one here, make a different one there, and choose between the three. And I've always got my base one to go back to there. Okay, hopefully that's given you enough information on how to make this cute dinosaur, how to pose your models as well. Hope you've enjoyed the course, and I'll see you next time.